14th episode of Tale Tehani. My name is Tehani Chandrasena and today we have with us two extremely talented individuals. This is a very exciting day as it is the first time we have two individuals on the same episode. Anika Seniviratna and Tehan Vijaymana are here today to talk about tennis and their journey and how far they've come through that and a little bit of everything else. Hi guys. Hi, Hi Tehani. Um, so to begin, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name is Anika and I was a student at Ladies College. Um, I got into tennis when I was about, well actually when I was very small, when I was about three years old. And I started playing tournaments when I was about nine. Um, I also love music, theater, drama, anything related to the performing arts. And I'm also super interested in fashion and I'm a big animal lover, basically very oh, interested so in lots of things. Great. Yeah. Um, well, I'm Sam Jamana, I'm 18 years old. Um, I go to Royal College and I'm in grade 12. Right now I'm doing my London Airways privately. And yeah, um, I play tennis. I started playing mm -hmm. tennis when I was about six. And like Anika, I think I started playing tournaments at when I was about nine. I also play cricket at that time. Um, and other than that, during when I have free time, I play the guitar and you know, okay. hang out with friends and yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I know both of you, as you mentioned, have started tennis way early on in life. So what propelled you to pursue that and how far you've come? What was that journey like? Um, so for me, I think uh, my dad was a former Davis Cup player and my aunt was also an exceptional tennis player. So I think that's why my parents uh, pushed me to start playing. But then soon after that, I think I fell in love straight away. And um, the more tournaments I played, uh, school and all I learned, my passion just grew. And yeah, I think having people in my family that have done well really pushed me more and to and do well. And really encouraging, I assume. Yes, yes. Awesome. Anika, what about you? Uh, for me, I was actually involved in lots of sports right. uh, from the time I was like five years old. Um, but with tennis, I won my first tournament when I was eight plus, oh, nearly nine. Amazing. And after that, um, it was just something that I gravitated towards naturally. Um, and also, I think when you realize you're good at something and you have talent and potential, it's, my parents really believed that I should pursue that. And so did I, because I absolutely loved playing when I was small. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept training. And before I knew it, it was, you know, under 16 and I was a tennis player. So. Awesome. Amazing. So as you said, you started with many sports. And so tell me a little bit about your other um, sports and your background with that. Uh, for me, uh, I s started golf when I was about four years old. Mm -hmm. And then with that, I had table tennis, ballet, art, in anything you can think of. And um, later, as I grew up, obviously, you had to kind of, you know, compartmentalize what you were doing. So yeah. I played netball in school and yeah. I kept playing until I left school. I was part of the netball team. And um, I was also involved in drama, theatre, and um, I, also play, I also did athletics for school. Right. And basically, um, at Ladies College, it's a very small community, right. so you tend to get you know, dragged into anything and if everything. you're willing to do. <laughs> yeah, and so I think I was really you know, happy to have that because it, you have a lot of fun. You don't have to really specialize in one thing. Amazing. Um, so yes, it was definitely tough because when you have so many commitments, you have to balance a lot of things, yeah. and then on top of that, you have your studies. But um, I was definitely involved in anything and everything you can think of in school okay. sports-wise. That's great. Um, talking about balance, Tehan, you're an all-A student and you're also heavily into tennis training, obviously. So how did you strike that balance and were there any sacrifices involved? If so, what were they? Um, so until I was about 14, I did play cricket for school and also tennis. So I was balancing both with my studies, um, but at 14, at that point, especially at Royal College, it was really tough to do both. So I decided to drop cricket, right. but I love playing cricket. I still love playing cricket. Like when I'm free, I'd always go out and play cricket okay. with my brother. But um, I felt like tennis, I had more opportunities and I could balance my work better with tennis. And I think looking back now, I don't regret that decision at all because um, I'm happy with what I've done. Uh, when it came to O levels, I think. Uh, I'm proud that I didn't really like you know stop playing and completely focus yes. on studies because a lot of people do that. Say, that's, that's really amazing that you did both and sort of yes. were like an inspiration to somebody that would want to maybe stop obviously the sport. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think the fact, uh, I, yeah, right before my O-levels, I had trials, I think, for soft games. And I think when I studied, um, had, did the O-levels there, so I think, right. you know, there are some people who really balance well. Yeah. And I'm lucky to be on, so I'm lucky to be awesome. balanced through it. That's great. Um, so both of you obviously balance amazingly well. So what are some of your tips when it comes to balancing and what have you done in your life to get to where you are and strike that balance in both of your lives? Maybe Anika, you can go first. Um, I mean, it is, it's definitely not easy. I've seen so many of my friends just say, you know what, it's not worth it. Because yeah. even for me, there were times when I'd ask myself, you know, you're doing all this because you want to be what a professional tennis player. I mean, is that something you really want to do? And I think that's the first thing to really, you know, ask yourself if that's what you want to be doing. Because if you're not having fun, you're not enjoying yourself, there's really no point. But I think once you realize that, after that, it's honestly just all about, um, you know, focus. And uh, yeah, you're going to have to sacrifice on a lot of things. You're probably not going to be able to do half the things your friends are doing. Um, but it's just something that you have to make up your mind to do. I mean, it's definitely not easy and especially, you know, when it comes time for O levels, I think in s local schools in Sri Lanka, there's so much pressure put on O levels, sure. probably even more so yeah. than A levels. So a lot of kids just feel very overwhelmed by it, even before they get into O level and it's actually very difficult. But I've also seen it, it can definitely be done. It's been proven by so many people sure. and I have so many friends who have had to balance so many different things, you know, really hectic schedules, but yeah. it can be done. And like he said, my sister and five other girls did their O levels in Nepal itself and they were, you know, rushing from matches straight to their paper, then back home and all of them got really good results. I mean, That's my sister, amazing. she got exceptional results. Yeah. So it can be done. It just takes a little focus and hard work. Amazing. And Tehan, was it similar or yes, were there so certain like, like different? Aspects. Like what you said, basically, if you really want to achieve something and you, if it's a dream, I think you'll always find time to do it. Um, and again, like you said, there's, you have to learn to sacrifice a lot of things if you want to achieve yeah. your goals. So, Amazing. Okay. So for the most part, uh, tennis is an individual sport, right? Unless you're playing doubles. So um, what's that like? What's that journey like, you know, doing everything on your own, training on your own, and at the end, it's just you that wins or loses. So how has that been? Um, it's true, tennis is an individual sport, but I wouldn't say you're always completely yeah. alone. You have your coaches, your fitness trainer, and, you know, if you're lucky enough to make a few friends, then, you know, I guess you have them too. For me, I had my parents and my sister. My sister also plays tennis, so that was, I think, a real comfort to me. But you're right, it's, I mean, when you're playing your match, you're completely on your own. Yeah. And even at training, you know, you see your friends who play team sports. At least, you know, you have someone there to crack a joke. Yeah, or with, fall back or, on. Exactly, yeah. something like that, you know. But in tennis, you just don't have that. And sometimes on the court, you know, you do feel super lonely. And I've actually played netball, which is a team sport. So yeah. I, I really felt the, the difference. difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, I think it, it just depends on your personality because I have friends who wouldn't, they're excellent, you know, um, either rugby or netball players and they just love having that team element to it and yeah. they would never dream of playing tennis because they're like, you know, you're all alone, how can you even train? Yeah. Um, but for me, I think tennis was something I was so used to from the time I was small. Routine. I was really used to being alone. In fact, I was so used to it, you know, it was hard to learn to gel with the team for netball. Right. Um, but it's definitely hard. It has its ups and downs. I guess in the same time, it's all on you. So whether you play well or badly, it's, you're only letting yourself down. Yeah. Um, and if you play well, you know, you get to share the win. It's just you. You don't really have that many people to celebrate with. Yeah. 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 Um, well, yeah. So I think there are a few things you can do to make it less lonely. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the practicing in a squad, getting into your school team, yeah. I think that really helps. And yeah, I think it teaches you in a way to, you know, you have to do everything yourself, right? Because what you do ultimately, for example, in a team, I mean, you can also have the others to back you up, right? But when you're on the court alone, you really don't have anyone because uh, that's why you need to learn. I think that's a good thing about it being an individual, more of an individual sport. Uh, but yeah, I think if you surround yourself with the correct support, yeah. I think you can do really well and that, you know, makes it easier for you to okay, do well. amazing. Um, so a little more about tennis, obviously. Um, I know both of you have won many, many tournaments and have many titles, but was there ever a time that you faced defeat? And if so, what was that like? I might be pushing some nerves, but um, just share. 
Um, so for me, uh, I think until I was about 15, I was never really in the top five, top three. Yeah. I was losing a lot of matches. Yeah. And also when I started traveling, because, um, you know, the standards obviously much higher there. So, you know, that losing a lot in the start, um, obviously was sad, but yeah. I think it motivated me and it uh, helped me, it helped my drive and pushed me more to do better. So I think for me, losing the start was actually better. Okay. I was actually the complete opposite. I mean, for a while, um, you know, I, w I was winning from the time I was 9, 10 years right. old. And of course you have, you know, you lose to the older kids, but nobody ever really thinks about that as like a huge yeah, defeat. Of course. But there is a downside to that where sometimes you kind of forget that you're also just human and you can lose. Yeah. I mean, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when I was, um, I mean, obviously I didn't win everything. I had many losses on and off, especially like he said, you know, when you go on tour, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, obviously I had that. But um, for me, my biggest, uh, I think my first, you know, big defeat was when I was about... Um, 15 years old and I yeah. lost a final that everyone was expecting me to win okay. and I was you know I didn't know how to react to that I because there's a lot of pressure exactly well. and yeah. you know you just sometimes you know you you just need someone to tell you you know what you're human you're yeah. going to lose you're not always going to win and then you have you know everyone around you you know going like she lost you yeah. know <laughs> can she can she keep playing tennis you know how is she going to keep going can yeah. you believe she lost this one match um, so it is really difficult um, and, you know, that's just something that you have to learn to deal with because it's definitely part of it. You're going to have so many people saying those things. And so, um, and you know, you just have to keep going. It makes you stronger, right? Because once you lose, you have sort of like definitely. more drive like, to do better the next time. Or and I find, I, you know, I learn my biggest lessons when you lose, you know. I mean, it's hard. Nobody likes losing. But it's something that has to happen. You just need to learn that you need to lose to be able to win in the long run. Amazing. Definitely. That's some really awesome advice to whoever is listening. Um, apart from that, I know uh, as both of you mentioned, you're musically talented as well, not just sports. So what has that been? I'm sure like you haven't probably pursued it as much as sport, but uh, what has that been like? Is music more of a safe space? Is it something you wish you did more of? Or is it just something that, you know, you a safe space as I said before? Um, for me, uh, it's more like a hobby to get my mind off tennis and studies as well. Um, so I think I bought, my dad bought me a guitar and I just, you know, watch some YouTube videos, learn the chords on my own, yeah. just learn new songs. And I still do that, like every day when, I'm, when I don't have anything, I just learn new songs. So for me, I think it's a really fun hobby that takes my mind off tennis and studies, which is a very good thing. I think that everyone who's very serious in doing stuff, they should also have something to, you know, take their mind off that. And yeah, that's what it is for me. I agree completely with him because for me, music is just, you know, it's that one thing that you can always go back to after yeah. a long day. Uh, and for me, I also love the theatre and drama. Acting is, you know, probably my biggest passion. And it's just something that helps you, yes, like he said, you know, take your mind off everything else that's happening. And at the same time, I think everyone needs to have that balance. I mean, people tend to get really one-tracked, especially when, you know, you're a really good sportsman. People tend to tell you what you can and can't do. Like, for example, they'd say, okay, you're a tennis player. Why are you trying to go for piano and cello lessons? Yeah. You know, and you kind of start to believe that as well, because obviously it's extra work sometimes yeah. to do those things. But I'm so glad that I learned how to play uh, instruments and, you know, go for singing classes. That was actually one of my biggest stress relievers. I would wait for my right. singing class at the end of the week yeah. because it's just something I loved doing, you know. That's awesome. Um, so the next question is geared towards uh, Anika. So I know you're heading off to uni soon. And um, what made you decide that you're going to the US and do you plan on pursuing tennis in college? Um, <laughs> for me, uh, there was definitely a toss-up between going to the US and the UK. In the end, you know, my mom was telling me, she said, you know, it's four years of your life. Yeah. You don't, for me, I don't like the cold at all. Yeah. I don't do well <laughs> in rainy, cold weather. I, I would, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I need the beach, I need sun. Right. Um, so the US was definitely, I mean, the easiest choice um, for that. And 
uh, in terms of academics as well, I just felt like, you know, they, um, they're not so one track when it comes to uh, their academics and extras. And for me, I'm someone who's always been involved in extracurriculars. Exactly. Um, and also the main reason, tennis. Everyone yeah. says, you know, you play college tennis, that's yeah. brilliant. And um, I will most likely play college tennis. Um, Amazing. So we'll see how that goes. But the main reason would be, I think the US just, you know, it's, it's much more diverse in terms of, you know, and what the unis the, offer. Um, education system is also different to like the London syllabus that yeah, we follow now. Definitely. That's more of like the college experience exactly. that everybody talks about. So that's great. And uh, lastly, I just wanted to ask both of you if you have any advice to people that are about to start a competitive sport or who are currently doing it and having a hard time on deciding whether to continue or you know to further it so what are, what is some of your advice um well if you're starting uh, i think you should try a, lot, a few sports and then you know really find what you like once you find what you like make sure you you know you you have true passion as in you love the sport like you love it for a long time so you can continue you can improve and like i said before if you you know you the support is very important and support not just your parents or coaches obviously your parents and coaches are, uh, coaches are very important, but also your friends, your colleagues. So surround yourself with the correct support and I think you can do really well. Okay. I completely agree with him. I, for me, I think everyone's very excited to start a sport okay. until suddenly they realize that, you know, it's not all fun and games all the yeah. time. You're going to have those hard times, especially once you start playing competitively more and more, you know, you win, you lose. And there are days when you're going to feel like, you know, why am I putting myself through this? Especially when you look around. I mean, I'm sure Tehan can relate better than anyone. You see your friends having so much fun. So like he said, I completely agree. You have to surround yourself with the right people. For me, um, it was really hard for me, you know, during middle school and times like that because all my friends were having such a good time. And I was barely in school because I was traveling so much. And, you know, I would think, you know, what, what am I really going to get out of this? Best case scenario, you know, you win a big tournament someday. And that gives you 15 minutes in the spotlight with, you know, headlines and things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, you're also missing out on so many memories, fun times with your friends. And I think that's so important, especially when you're growing up. I'm, yeah. I have so many in friends who play tennis internationally who dropped out of school when they were 12. It's just yeah. online school and tennis. And, you know, that's so sad. But at the same time, um, I think it's so important to have the right people around you to push you. I was really blessed to find friends who always motivated yeah. me, you know, they never made me feel bad for missing out on things. And then at the same time, I had friends who were playing other sports competitively and who were also going through the same thing, missing out on like, having no, fun. And yeah. it was so nice to have that because, you know, you know, you're not alone. And I think that's so important. And it's also super important to just know what you want, because for me, what happened to me was like, you know, the last few years, it was um, you know, you start to resent something when it seems like it's doing more hurt to you than good. Um, and so, you know, you start listening to what other people have to say. All There's going to be so many negative comments. So, you know, social media, there's so many things that are going to get you down. So it's all about learning how to work through that. And I think having a close group of people who you can count on and who support you is just so important. Amazing, great. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so us. much. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you join us next week as we talk to more inspiring young individuals. Have a great week.